Today, I'm gonna to share with you how to create a progress bar inside of Notion. And a progress bar just requires a formula. So we're gonna create two different progress bar designs. One I'm calling a classic progress bar and the other a full progress bar. And we're going to just use one scenario to create both of these designs. We're going to use the habit tracker. Now you can just watch and learn how to do this, or you can duplicate the page in the description and follow along exactly what I'm seeing on the screen on yours. So let's just get right into it. This is the page that you will see down in the description below to duplicate and follow along. Now we're gonna go through the habits progress bar and click on habits. In this database table, we have a few things. Every single row in this table, or every single page, is a date. So every single day, we have a list of habits to check off. And up here in the columns, we have 11 habits. These are just placeholder habits. If I adjust the width here, you'll see habit one, two, three, up to 11. So that's what we're gonna work with, a good number of habits. Now this may not be the case for you, but I just wanted to show you in a case where there are a lot of habits or a lot of properties to work with. So what we're gonna do here is create a progress bar. We're going to create a progress bar that shows you how many checkboxes are ticked true for each day. To determine that calculation, we're going to use a formula property. So to create a formula property, or a new column, just select this plus button inside of the table. I'm gonna rename it to classic progress bar and change the type down in advanced to formula. Now you have two options with a formula. Either you can edit it within this window via edit, or you can click away and just select inside of any cell. So let's start with figuring out what percentage of checkboxes are ticked each day. I'm gonna do that in a separate column. Let's begin with the percent done. And you'll notice right away, the pop-up window gives you a few things. On the left-hand side, we have properties at the top and we have all of our habits here from one to 11, the name property as well, and the classic progress bar formula we just created. So that's all of our properties in the table. But down below, we have actions or functions to use inside of the formula to make it work. And there's a lot of them to choose from. In order to count the number of true checkboxes, I'm gonna have to use the function either two number or unary plus. We're gonna use two number. And that is right here. Two number parses a number from text. And a checkbox isn't text, but if we were to convert each checkbox into a number, it would either give us a one for a true checkbox or a number zero for a false one. So let's type that in to number, make sure the N is capital. Make sure my cursor is within those parentheses. I'm going to first click habit one. So I'm gonna say plus. I'm going to highlight and copy this first function, just paste and add habit two, habit three and all the way up to habit 11 and 11. So now that we've added all of these up, I can divide this number by the total amount of properties we're dealing with. So I'm going to isolate this within parentheses first, the beginning and the end, and then divide by 11. And that should give us a percentage. What I can do is click inside of this cell and click this one, two, three number to configure the type of number I'm dealing with. So in this case, I want to turn it into a percent. Now the number is still a little bit crazy and we need to round it down. So I'm going to click through one of these. There are three functions to use for rounding numbers. One is round, which is just a regular round function, seal to round up, floor to round it down. So I'm going to type floor at the beginning, open parentheses and close it all out at the end. Then what I'm gonna do between these two open parentheses is just times this by 100. And at the end, divided by 100, and this should give us a cleaner percentage. So just to go over this, this is the original calculation we made. 
and I just added floor 100 times before and then divided by 100 at the end. So now we have this, which looks really nice. Let's move on to the classic progress bar. And of course I misspelled classic, so I'm going to click on the title and rename really quick. Classic. And let's get started. In order to create this, we need to use a function called the slice function. We're going to have a string in which we are going to slice or take characters away from. And in order to signal what characters exactly we want to take away from it, we're going to use a start index number and an end index number. We have a string of 10 characters, let's say. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So maybe I only want to see the characters one through four. What I would say is start at zero or before the string and end at character four. And that should give me one, two, three, and four. I could also say end at character five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. You can see now how the slice function is so important for a progress bar and makes it a lot easier to create. Because this end index number fluctuates between zero and 10, we need to convert what we just created this calculation into a number between zero and 10 and replace this 10 with it. So I'm gonna click away and just create another temporary formula that says temp. We're going to delete this later and the type of course is going to be a formula. So I just wanna show you how this works isolated. I want to figure out how to turn this number into a number between zero and 10. And really that's just saying 10 times percent done. So I can go down to the property percent done and just click on it. Since it's a number, I can make that calculation. And now that's exactly what we have between zero and 10. So if that's the case, what I can do here in the classic progress bar is click back through and instead of saying 10, say 10 times percent done. That will be our new end index number. And now you can see that string fluctuating. So let's replace the string with some symbols. And at the top of the page, if you don't see this, you can just hide and show description in your database table. At the top, I do have 10 square symbols. So I'm gonna copy that, go back into the formula, and I'm going to replace one through zero with those symbols. Done. And now it looks more like a progress bar and we're almost done. What I wanna do now is take a look at some of these rows down here. Let's say that we are 9% complete this day or 0%. What I want to do is even if it's below 10%, of course, I want to at least see one symbol. So what I'm going to create is an if statement. You want to use if statements to solve problems like this. So inside of temp, let's just delete this. An if statement looks like this. If I'm going to click on if. If switches between two options based on another value. So basically if Boolean or true or false statement is true, give a true value or a result. Otherwise, give another result. So if percent done is under 0.1 or 10%, then give me a string. Otherwise, give me another string and then close out that if statement. So what do I want to see there for under 10%? I want to see at least just one symbol. So I'm going to copy one symbol into my clipboard and paste that in. Now you'll see that one symbol is populated in these last two rows. So how do I combine these two formulas together? Well, let's go into classic progress bar and just copy what we have inside. What I can do inside of temp is instead of this false condition being an empty space, delete and paste in that slice function we created before. So now that's going to be the false condition. So if percent done is less than 10%, just one symbol, otherwise the slice function. Done, and now what I can do is replace temp as the new classic progress bar. And I'm going to delete classic progress bar delete property. 
then I can rename to classic progress bar. So now we've solved that problem. What I want to do from here is tack on this percentage to the end of the progress bar. Now, if you're working with something like this, you may not want to, you may want to just show percent done next to the progress bar, but it may be more aesthetically pleasing to fit in that percentage at the end of the bar and simply hide this property from view. When you're adding things to the ends of strings, you need to add a string. So if I say plus empty space or plus this, it will be compatible. So what I mean by that is if I were to just say plus and then percent done, type mismatch, percent done is not text. What I want to do to convert this into text is use the function format. So I'm going to type out format, open parentheses, and then nest this inside the format with a closed parentheses. And you'll see it tacked onto the end, 0.45. That's the actual number that is inside of this cell. We just formatted it to look like a percentage. So I'll have to make some changes. Before this format, first of all, I want to add an empty space. And then inside of format, just multiply this number by 100. Now we have 45 and then plus in quotes, the percentage sign. And that will be the final formula. And what I can do from here is even click on percent done since this is a bit redundant and just hide in view. But for right now, we're going to keep it in view because I need to use it for the next progress bar design, which is going to be the full progress bar. And you'll see the example of that up here where we have filled squares and empty squares. Let's hide the classic progress bar in view and instead add a formula called full progress bar. Type formula. And again, we're going to call upon this percent done property. So actually the first slice function getting the first filled squares to go up and down is the same. So inside of full progress, let's say slice and quotes, comma, first and last index. So I'm going to copy to my clipboard the 10 filled squares, paste them inside, and replace this zero with 10 times percent done again. Now, how do I get those empty squares at the end? What I'm gonna do is first copy the empty squares to my clipboard, just so I have it there. And then I'm going to create another temporary formula. Temp type formula. And let's take a look at how we can use the slice function again. So inside of here, I can say slice, and in quotes, start and end index, paste in those empty squares. So before, you can fluctuate up the progress bar with the end index number. We want to do the opposite. We want to take away. So to do that is just simply by having only one index number, and you can do that. So if I have two, three, four, five, six, you can see how it's going backwards, or 10 would be zero. So I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard really quick and just show you what I mean. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. We have 10 different characters. You can see if I have two here, it's taking away those first two and just showing me what's left. So I can replace two with 10 multiplied by the percent done. I'm going to highlight this and copy it to my clipboard. Go back into full progress bar and I'm going to add this new slice function to the end. So because slice functions are strings, I can do this. I can just paste it in. So you'll notice that we now have 10 overall squares, four of which are filled in. Again, you'll notice that everything below 10% is just showing empty squares. So let's create that if statement again inside of the temporary formula. So if again, 
percent done is less than 0.1 or 10%, then give us a true condition. Otherwise, give us a false condition. In true, let's say just one filled square and nine empty ones. So I'm going to copy that one filled, paste it in, and then copy nine empty and paste those inside. So now our instances of below 10% will have this one filled square. So how do we combine these again? I'm going to use the temporary formula to do that. And I'm going to replace the false condition again with this new formula. So delete this false condition string and paste that inside. So now we have if the percent done is less than 10%, we will show one block filled, otherwise just perform that slice function. And then again, I can delete full progress bar. Now the reason why I'm kind of breaking this up into separate formulas, you don't have to do this, but I just wanna show you how all of these functions work separately so you're not too confused. I'm going to rename temp to full progress bar. And again, we can tack on this percentage at the end. So we can only tack on strings, I'm gonna have an empty space, and then I'm going to format the percent done. But I'm gonna make sure it is 100 times the percent done to give us that whole number, plus the percentage sign at the end. And this will be our full formula. It's not too long, and the reason for that is because we're calling on our calculation, which is quite long. And this is exactly why we want to separate these two columns. Now from here, I can of course hide percent done because it's a bit redundant. And we can have our full progress bar here to look at. I hope that was useful. I hope that that gave you some insight into how people are creating progress bars in Notion. Um, it's pretty straightforward once you really break it down and understand how the slice function works. If you are interested more in how the slice function works and other ways to use it and other scenarios to use it, I do have a video that I've uploaded the same day as this one for just that, looking at how just the slice function works. Anyway, I am going to see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.